Hey, I'm Zeta Sage Plays. Welcome back to San Bernardino Zoo. This is the first episode of season two, and appropriately enough, we're adding two new species, including free roaming peafowl and something rather larger. Yes, I've recovered from my jet lag and I'm full of inspiration from my trip to Singapore and Bali. And now it's time to make some big improvements to the zoo. From the entrance to the islands, we're going to be bringing ideas from the four incredible zoos I saw in Singapore into San Bernardino. I've already added some of the new foliage from the Oceania pack and brought some ideas from the entrance to Singapore Zoo to the transport hub, but we're gonna start with something I've wanted to see in this zoo since day one, the new orangutan behaviors. So here we are at the treetop trail. I cannot wait to see this in action properly at last and get the orangs actually using some of this climbing stuff. So the only things that they can bracket on are these large logs. And then I've heard that they can also use the large bamboo, but I've not, uh, I've not tested that. Um, but apparently they can use that as well. So what we need to do is get a lot more of this stuff in. I've been criticizing the orangs in this game since day one. It's very obvious they were just a, pretty much a clone of the gorillas and Frontier obviously never really intended them to do anything more than wander around on the floor or sort of slowly walk across logs like this. It's obviously been tricky for them to get it to work and this is the solution they've come up with. So we need to get loads of these in so they've got lots of opportunities to do it. Then we need to check the traversable area map and make sure that they're going to be able to use them. This piece here that I've been using as a nail just to make them look more realistic and make them look like they're stuck together, I discovered actually knocks out the traversable area for that uh, part of the log that it's in. So we need to get rid of these and then start getting as much of these log pieces in as possible. There you go, you can see the unbroken green lines now, which means that this is now fully functioning. So let's start getting more logs in. What I wanna do is join up all the climbing platforms that we built back when we built the treetop trail with these logs so that the orangs can get between them. They've all got the enrichment items on them. You can see the little grab ball there. Um, we've got some more above it. We've got some sleeping platforms, all sorts of stuff on here to encourage them to get up here. So we're gonna use these big logs and just join them up. The other advantage of these big logs is when they're not brachiating, when they're just walking, it still looks like they could actually walk across it, unlike the, the thinner logs, which I've used for the Siamang, which um, the orangs just look kind of stupid when they walk across them because they're way too thin. So we're gonna put um, some little braces in and things like that, just make sure this looks realistic. Um, if we get this below the level of the bigger log, that should still enable them to walk across here. And then we'll try and get some longer sections in as well, just to encourage the brachiation as much as possible. A couple of weeks ago, I was lucky enough to visit the actual habitat that inspired this one at Singapore Zoo. Uh, they just have Siamang in theirs, but it is absolutely incredible the way that you walk through it on these raised pathways. And they're just Siamang all around you. Uh, swinging through the trees. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, they've got two orang habitats. They've got Bornean and Sumatran orangs there. Um, and one of them is shared with the Asian small clawed otters, which is a really popular mix in zoos. I'm gonna be uploading a full tour video of all four of Singapore zoos soon, or fairly soon when I can get through the, I think 500 different videos I filmed. Let's get back to San Bernardino Zoo. I'm gonna put a bit more climbing in off camera. And then we're gonna check out the orangs and see what they do. Okay, the orangs are getting into position. This is our female, taking out the, the new log that she's got to walk or hopefully brachiate on. There is the male, but will they brachiate? That is the question. Come on guys, you know you want to. Oh my God, at last. It's only taken three years, but they actually look like orangs now. That is amazing, I love it. Right, onto the water terraces. So I mentioned we'll be adding two new animals today. Let's take care of the first one. So one of the other things I saw in Singapore Zoo, which is actually pretty common in zoos, which I loved, is free roaming peafowl, just chilling all around the zoo, wherever they fancy flying or walking around to, um, you can see them. And I really wanted to get that into San Bernardino Zoo. Now in sandbox mode, free roaming peafowl is really easy to achieve. You just whack down a load of null barriers like this, Turn off escapes in the setting menu, chuck in a peafowl or two, and bingo, you have free roaming peafowl. In franchise mode, it is a lot harder, but I was determined after my trip to Singapore Zoo that we were gonna bring them into here. So how do we get this working in franchise mode? What we're gonna do, as you can see here, is put in the null barriers around the area that I want them in. I don't want it to be too big. What I need to have is some natural barriers that are gonna prevent them from escaping, like the uh, crane habitat, the tree frog oasis, etc. 
and identify an area where there's only a couple of parts where they could escape and then we're going to use a nifty little trick to prevent them from escaping through those parts without actually having to change the look of the area at all. So I've defined this as a habitat by adding the habitat gate in there. We're just going to move over the door at the back of the tree frog oasis to line it up nicely and then we'll add our first p -fowl. And we can see here, these are the escape points. We've got a little one there and we've got the two major one here on the path. So how do we prevent them from escaping through there? We are gonna use the elephant grass trick. So what you do is you take the largest piece of elephant grass, the four meter one, you spin it upside down and then you bury it just below the ground. So it is just like one pixel below the path. And then we put another one in here and the hitboxes on these elephant grasses are absolutely huge. Uh, I think uh, it was probably a mistake on Frontier's part originally, which they've just left in there because they know people like to do this with them. And uh, just by doing that, you can see almost all the escape points are gone. We'll fill the rest in with a little bit more foliage. And now we'll add in some enrichment. This needs to be a, a working habitat. So we need a toy and food enrichment for them. I'm also gonna hide a sprinkler underwater. You won't be able to see it. I only just discovered that you could do that. And now we have free roaming peafowl. Let's check them out. Oh, that looks so good. I'm really happy with how this has turned out. I originally tried to have them roaming over the entire water terraces, but after placing about 100 upside down elephant grasses, there were still escape points everywhere. Because if you get more than a couple of the elephant grasses next to each other, they start being able to jump on top of them and then run across them, and that defeats the entire point. So I had to scale my plans back a little bit, but the way they can walk all around that area looks so cool. All right, on to the next improvement. So we're going to do some custom planting, which I don't think I've ever done before, or certainly not in this series anyway. One of the things I saw when I was in Bali um, in the jungles there was enormous bamboo. I had no idea that bamboo got that big. Uh, it's probably where these huge bamboo pieces in the game come from. I hadn't really uh, figured that it would get this big and it just looked really cool. And what I wanted to do was build some to place in the islands. Um, not only does it look good and unique because it's custom, but it also serves as a barrier around the edge of that area so that you can't see into the rest of the zoo when you're in there, which makes it more immersive. So what I've done is I've got one of the um, eight meter pieces of the normal bamboo, move that up into the air, and then we're gonna use the bamboo construction pieces to um, make custom stems for it. It's gonna take a while. What I'm gonna do is cover up every single one of the stems on the plant piece with these construction pieces, um, bend them, make it look natural and get it so that when it's finished, we get this effect of this huge bamboo uh, that you can't get in the game normally. Um, we're gonna place this around different parts of the islands. Uh, you can see it in the background behind the gibbons here. Next to the proboscis monkeys, we're going to use it in the new habitat that we're about to start building as well. And this just gives a unique flavor to this part of the zoo. Now, the new habitat. So ever since we started building the islands, you guys have been asking in the comments if we're going to have Komodo dragons in the zoo. And my answer was always no, because I originally planned to have them in the zoo and then Frontier added the Asian water monitor and I really, really wanted to get those guys into the zoo. And because I'd already built four Komodo dragons in Tecton Zoo, and because the Asian water monitors are so cool, I decided to use those instead. And then I saw an amazing habitat for the Komodo dragons, and in fact, an amazing Komodo dragon in Singapore Zoo. It was enormous, and it was so brightly colored, um, had big flashes of gold all over its back, as well as the, uh, the standard kind of gray. Um, I decided I really wanted to get that habitat into San Bernardino Zoo. And we have this space opposite the water monitors. So that is what we're gonna do. We're gonna turn this space into a really cool Komodo dragon habitat. Uh, we've got loads of foliage here already. So what I'm gonna do is just temporarily move this up into the air so we can see what we're doing. And then we're gonna dig a ditch here. This is gonna be pretty much an exact replica of the habitat I saw. This is how they did it there. They had a ditch which was filled with plants. So you just had this little wall and then only a few meters away from you was this huge Komodo dragon. And the coolest thing in the habitat was he had this giant set of rocks to um, climb up onto and sort of display on. And as we were watching, he climbed up it and then just sat on these rocks looking uh, majestic. Um, and I, I just had to have that in this zoo. So that's what we're gonna do here. So I'm dropping in some of the big bamboo that we just made at the back of the habitat. This is gonna block out the view of the to be completed part of the zoo behind it. So we'll put that all down there and then just get it to the right height. I really like how that looks. And then we'll start moving some of the foliage around and getting a clearing in the middle. While I do that, I gotta tell you what happened to me when I was in Singapore. I went to Gardens by the Bay 
And we're just chilling out, having a drink by a lake in the center of the gardens when an actual Asian water monitor climbed out of the water onto the path. It was big. It was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Um, I don't think the rest of the uh, patrons were quite as excited by it as I was, and somebody rapidly uh, ran towards it and scared it off. But uh, that was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I did not expect to see one of those in the wild. This is the display rock where the Komodo dragon is going to sit, sort of. <laughs> if you've tried to build for the Komodo dragons in this game, you will know there is something very, very wrong with their hitboxes. Their traversable area is pretty much the worst in the game, I think. Any sort of rock anywhere in their habitat, they can't go anywhere near it. They can't climb anything. They can't walk up inclines. Um, they're basically broken. So unfortunately, um, being in franchise mode, he's not actually going to be able to, to get up here. But what we can do is simply move him up here and leave him there for some really, really cool cinematics. Um, and then I'll have to let the poor guy down again because he won't be able to get down and he won't be happy. Uh, in sandbox mode, obviously, we'll just leave him up there. Maybe have another one walking around. I'll get him up there for some cool shots for the cinematics at the end. Uh, and then he'll spend most of his time just walking around the rest of the habitat. It's a shame. Um, I'm not sure Frontier will ever fix them, to be honest, because they're only in the deluxe edition of the game. But um, when he's up here, trust me, he looks really cool. Now, when you're trying to recreate something exactly and you've got a lot of moving around to do, there is a little trick that you can use, and that means it's time for Franchise Masters. So when you're moving an object around like this rock, you need to get it into a really, really specific position. Sometimes once you've spun and spun and spun around all three axes, you can get lost. You're not really sure where you're going anymore and it gets really hard to move. Now there are actually two sets of axes that you can use in Planet Zoo. The relative axis, which I'm using here, which enables you to move things relative to themselves. And then if you click that button I just clicked, you get the world axis. That always enables you to move things directly up and down and on a preset horizontal axis so you don't get lost. I hope that's useful. Let's get back to the build. So what I'm doing here is using some of these bamboo pieces, some of the tiny little dried bamboo pieces to form a back wall for the habitat. Um, just something subtle and something that you're not really going to notice, but still quite natural looking to keep the dragons where we want them. So we're going to place this along the back just in front of the big bamboo that we just added. Um, we'll keep this all in a group so it's nice and easy. And then simply copy this one piece all the way along the back of the habitat. We don't want anything too flash in this habitat. I want the dragon to be the star of the show. So we're gonna keep things really simple here. It's just gonna be loads of foliage, loads of bamboo, and then a nice clear area in the middle where we can get a good view of them. So we've placed that in. We'll just drop that down a bit to a more sensible height so it doesn't show up too much. And that's the habitat pretty much done. We just need a shelter. So I'm gonna drop in one of the generic shelters that we've used throughout the zoo, uh, make some modifications for it so he's got an indoor area. And then we'll do some decorating in front of it to sit it in nicely, put some more foliage on the walls and on the shelter itself, just to get the habitat looking good. And while I finish that off, let's talk a little bit about season two of San Bernardino Zoo. So as I mentioned in, I think it was the Australia tour, the main thrust of this season is gonna be building the massive African area that's gonna be the centerpiece of this zoo. I cannot wait to get started on that. That is gonna be in two weeks time because next week there is one animal in the Oceania pack that I have got to get into this zoo because I just saw an incredible habitat for them in Singapore Zoo. It's probably the best exhibit I've ever seen in a zoo and it features an animal very closely related to one of the animals in the Oceania pack. So next week we'll build that all in one episode is the plan. I can't wait for you guys to see it and then we will move on to Africa. I have no idea how long the African section is going to take. It is easily the most ambitious uh, thing that I've ever come up with in terms of the different areas and the terrain work and everything else. It's going to be a beast but I'm looking forward to starting it. So we finished the shelter. We'll just place a couple of these lipstick palms in front of it, and then we can check out the Komodo dragon. There he is, looking rather majestic, if I may say. I've missed these guys. It's been a long time since I've done a build for the Komodo dragons. They are really cool. The guests seem to be enjoying him as well. I will let him off this rock, don't worry. <laughs> We'll uh, take a look at him running around in his habitat. I think this is a really nice addition to this area. And the two lizards opposite each other works kind of nicely as well. Probably should have done this to, uh, to begin with, but I'm glad I've done it now. Thank you so much for watching today, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll leave you with our members monolith for the San Bernardino Zoo Explorers Club, which is really starting to fill up. Thank you so much to everyone who's joined. Hit the join button on the channel if you want to see your name up here as well. Thanks for watching. 
Bye.